So our next speaker is Dr Helen Hayden. She works at the Centre for Online Health, Centre for Health Service Research, where her focus is on the effective use of technology to increase access to health interventions, such as online psych psychoeducational tools for carers, telehealth implementation, tele-mental health and allied health, as well as increasing health literacy in the community. She's a registered psychologist with over 10 years experience. Um, Dr Hayden's going to talk to us today um, about her website for carers. Thank you. Ooh, hello, I'm a little bit short, I'm afraid. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. So I just want to preface this um, by saying that even though this website or online intervention is for carers, it's a recognition, as Karen's just said, that everybody's journey is different, there's a whole range of unknowns sometimes after a diagnosis of a brain tumour. And so some people may or may not need caring, but this one particularly, and we'll get to why it came about, but um, this one, this website or online intervention is particularly for carers of people with a brain tumour. And throughout, I'll be calling it interchangeably website and online intervention. So if, if you hear me say that, don't get confused, it's the same thing. Oh, no, I was hoping I would have the luck of the draw, but it's not gonna happen. Oh, oh, that did. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands upon which we're meeting today, the Yugger and Torbal peoples, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. So, oh, is it? Oh, yes. Um, I already, you got an introduction about where I work and that I'm a telehealth consultant, research fellow and psychologist. And I work with an amazing bunch of people at UQ in the Centre for Online Health. And we do do a whole bunch of research that is very much about providing services and programs to increase access to people um, to health services, uh, and usually by digital health or telehealth means. Yep, maybe if I just press it hard. I need to just quickly acknowledge the funding that got us here today is initially it was funded by a grant by the Sam Ryan Memorial Award and Dr. Danette Langbecker was um, running the show then and, and sort of helping sort of lead the project. I'll move into this. You gonna do that one? Okay, thank you. And now it's part of a larger program of research uh, led by Associate Professor Hariana Dillon, which is called the Brains Research. It was um, funded by a federal grant, MRFF, and that's just one stream. Our website, thank you, is just one of a number of different programs in that um, research set. I'm probably, t I'm talking to experts in the room, unfortunately, with people with lived experience, the re but I do need to say why this came about, is that we were hearing more and more about how um, carers were finding, well, people were finding that after a diagnosis of a brain tumour, there were all a lot of unknowns, people were unsure about where to get um, reliable information from, and especially when we're starting to look at some of the crazy things that happen on the internet. and. So particularly as well, it was coming to light that people that had to start caring for people once there were changes that got worse and worse for sometimes, um, then it was this feeling of being unprepared for this new role and this feeling of, well, what, what do I do? How do I know that I'm doing enough to support the person that I love or whether it's a spouse or, or friend or whatever? And so to address that, Oh yes, it works. To address that, there's some clinicians and researchers in WA, um, Georgia Halka and Anna Nowak, and they started this sort of in-home program called Confidence to Care. And they would go into people's homes and give the information that they needed to do it. So there was a bunch of um, allied health and nursing staff that were sort of backing it, of course. Go into people's homes, give them some support and the information that they needed. And it, was, it turned out really well in terms of people feeling more prepared. The outcomes of looking at how it was going was really great. However, if you didn't live without, within driving distance of Perth, you weren't able to really access that service. So hence the idea of transitioning it to an online format. 
And so the online format means obviously then that people can access this information, whether it's midnight, whether it's three o'clock in the morning, whether you're living in Mount Isa or wherever. And that's when Danette Langbecker, who was one of the researchers, came on board and she was with a, um, they started looking at how do we put this into an online format. And I started at the Centre for Online Health at that time and I was brought on to help do that too. So the initial website was fairly basic and it was very much informed by some consumer advisors in WA and they were explaining what they thought were the gaps in the information. We looked at the manual that was happened, that sort of led the workshops, the in-person workshops, and, um, and they looked at the gaps and said, oh, we need more of this, more of that. So it was really great to sort of get that basic stuff down. But we wanted to check how useful it was. So 10 people very kindly um, donated their time to do our evaluation. As with all research, it was confidential, um, de-identified information. And those people did an online survey that assessed people's moods, like depression, distress, um, anxiety, also how prepared they felt for a caring role, as well as um, looking at whether they felt they had unmet needs, what was it that they weren't getting. And then they were able to just explore the website for about four weeks, as much or as little as they liked. In the background, there's Google Analytics, and that was just tracking which sites, which pages or topics were most useful to people, which pages weren't being visited much. That information, even though I think it sounds a bit scary, that's Google Analytics, was purely coming back to us as researchers. Just three of us got access to that information. Again, all anonymous. After that four weeks, people did another survey, and this time it was similar questions, but they were also asked about how useful did they think the um, website was? Was it acceptable? Was it easy to use? And we also asked people to give us uh, to do some interviews. And so what we found there was that people's moods, such as depression, especially depression actually, um, anxiety and distress, it did go down, but we have to be really careful. There were only 10 people that did it, so we can't really look at that, oh yes, this is a, a world-breaking impact. Um, it's very much about going, okay, this is an interesting indication, and that's where now we're coming to sort of look at, can we do this on a broader scale, which is partly why I'm sort of here today as well. Um, and they, But what we did ask was that, yes, it was very, people said that they found it useful, and it was easy to use, and, but the interviews really gave us a deep dive into how this website and the information in it could help in terms of people's personal stories. So for some people, for example, they gave really great examples of, of how it sort of validated what they were doing. That at times they were worried that they weren't doing enough and could, is there something else they could do? And sometimes when you've got that information right in front of you on the screen, it was like, well, yes, it seems to be that I'm doing all that I can. So it was quite validating for people. What we did find with the um, 10 people that did it, though, is that they were quite what I would call experienced carers, meaning that the person that they were looking after had, had, had a diagnosis about two years beforehand. And so all that information that they were struggling to find, they had two years to find it. So a lot of it wasn't very useful in terms of new knowledge. It was more validating for people. But people did say that it was great to have this one-stop shop where we could search and look for different resources and a whole bunch of things. And, um, but what they did say as well, which I also agreed with, uh, was that the whole format of it was a little bit flat, it was a bit boring, and I thought it did look a little bit amateur. So we took on board all of their feedback and we transitioned the website. Now, I went into a lot of detail about the methods of that research because we're using very similar currently, and so you'll have a bit of an idea of where we're at now. So now it's um, a, a little bit. There's a whole bunch of things that we've put in there as a result of that pilot study. So people, for example, ask for videos, more videos of people's real-life experiences, and so that's what we're doing at the moment. Also, it's very white, middle class, heterosexual. So we're putting a little bit of, um, we wanna make sure that it's not so narrow, that we have some representation and some diversity in there as well. So we're very cognizant of that. 
Um, the other thing that, they, that people asked for was that there was so much information on there, it needed to be ordered differently. So, oops, so we ordered it quite differently and now you can sort of pop in at different places and depending on where you're at or just generally about your self-care. Um, is there anything else I need to say about that? I don't think so. And so now it brings us to the broader study where we have more funding to ask more people to look at it and, and just see whether it suits the needs for carers. And so the, what we're asking for people, we're looking for 100 people to do this. We've got 25 so far, so we'll see how we go. Hopefully um, some people can help us out. And it's going to be very similar to the pilot in terms of format, meaning there's two online surveys, six weeks to have a look around at the website. Obviously, you can still use it afterwards, but six weeks to have a look. And then um, we'll invite people to do an interview to see how useful or acceptable it is. And, and ideally, hopefully, it's, it is of some use and sort of answers some of the questions that you may have. And so if you are interested in taking part or know of people, there's a flyer up there that gives that information as well. And I think that's about it. Oh, I do want to say very much though, thank you to the people that did participate. There's some in the room today in our pilot. Um, and also BTAA and Peace of Mind Foundation who really helped in terms of recruiting people for the pilot. And finally, Often we've got a bunch of researchers and clinicians who get their names on papers and presentations, but behind the scene there's these people that do a lot of work, the admin and professional staff. And if you do um, want to take part in this at the moment, you'll get in contact with Catherine is one of the huge machines behind it all. So thank you everyone.